Hello and welcome to the latest Insider Interview. Our guest today is Mark Slater, manager of the Slater Growth Fund. Mark, thank you very much for coming in. Great pleasure. You are a growth investor investing in the UK. Is that a contradiction? <laughs> um, uh, growth is something that means different things to different people in the same way that value does. These are very poorly defined terms. Some people take the idea that you know, growth is, a, is extreme momentum, very high prices, um, often no profit at all. Um, our, our, our version of growth is double digit earnings growth. We only invest in profitable businesses. Um, and we look, obviously, want that to be sustained over a long period of time. So it, it's a very attainable target, you know, double digit growth. It's still meaningful. Obviously, sometimes we find companies which are growing quite a lot faster you know, than 10%. Um, but I, I, I think the, the um, and the risk profile, obviously, for the type of growth we're looking for is much, much lower. The, the UK gets a bad rap, um, of, and it has had for now for some time. But Schroeder did some very interesting research on this. The probability they found over a 10-year period of finding a 10-bagger, a company that goes up tenfold, is significantly higher in the UK than it is in the US. Um, the incidence over a decade, I think, in there was something like 6% in the UK versus 4.7% in the US. So, you know, the, the UK is an awful lot better as a hunting ground than people think. So you're looking for fast-growing companies, double-digit annual earnings growth. Where are you finding opportunities that meet that criteria? At the wide end of the funnel, we're looking for, for that, for growth. We're also, forecast growth, we're also looking for the ability to buy that growth cheaply and our primary measure of the price of growth is the peg so we're p comparing the PE with the growth rate on a prospective basis and the other really important criterion is cash flow so and that is a really good sanity test on the degree to which profit is real um, those three sort of primary focuses give us a short list of roughly five percent of the market so we eliminate 95 percent very very quickly and from there on in, our focus goes from being quantitative to entirely qualitative. In other words, if a business you know, is on the face of it growing and it's relatively cheap and it's generating cash, then all you're really inter interested in at that point is whether it's going to continue, you know, the degree to which it's reliable. So that really becomes our focus um, once we have our shortlist. So assessing that future growth, what questions are you asking company management? What signs are you looking for that a company's in a good position to keep growing? Uh, well, a lot of the analysis is about the sector, the, you know, the type of business you're looking at. That obviously is very important. Its position in its sector, its competitive position as well. Um, its scope for growth. Um, we, w when we meet management teams, we want, we're trying to understand their long range plans. And that's actually much more interesting because you can then get away from all the restrictions around the current year. It's quite difficult for management teams to talk about what's happening in the next few months. We're not that interested in the next few months. So once you get into the three, five year outlook and what the, you know, what the obstacles might be, what the risks are, what the op opportunities are, it's a much more interesting conversation. It's a much freer conversation. Um, but it's, it's very subjective. Um, there are very few objective hallmarks of, you know, that, that, that guide you as to whether a company is going to grow on a multi-year basis. Um, so it's, a lot of it is experience, really, and, and, and a lot of it's common sense. Are there any companies that you've bought recently that you're particularly excited about? Well, I mean, I would say, unlike a couple of years ago, right now, pretty well all growth companies are valued as value companies. In other words, they're all very lowly rated. Um, so it's a very interesting environment now for, for growth for, well, for any type of investing in the UK, I think, but particularly for us. Um, so, you know, the kind of businesses we've been buying recently, uh, Franchise Brands is a business that we bought relatively recently, which we think is f a first class business. One of it's the has the best management team in the franchise industry. It's the team that uh, the chief executive or the chairman is the person who built uh, dominoes in the UK into a very successful business f from nothing um, and it's a primarily business to business franchise operation across a number of brands um, but you know that business is growing 15 20 percent per annum 
um, in terms of earnings. Um, they're trading on around 12 and a half times after-tax profit, you know, PE. Um, so it's very, very lowly rated for that kind of business, which is very resilient. Um, and with one of the best management teams in the country, uh, or it, probably in the world, actually. So that's the sort of thing. You know, we've also been buying um, shares in loungers, which I think is the best sort of leisure operator in the UK. Um, they have the best like-for-like -like sales growth record of any business of their type. Um, it's trading well below its IPO price of many years ago. Um, and the business has got a runway to treble its size. Um, you know, it can fan finance everything internally. Um, so businesses of that kind, I mean, they're all different, but uh, businesses that can grow over a multi-year period significantly, um, which um, we can buy cheaply. And are you generally finding the best opportunities in smaller companies? And do you invest in the AIM market as well? We do. Um, I mean, so, well, the first part of your question is yes. Um, we, we look at, I would say, our, we have a bias between mid and small cap. That's our bias. We don't exclude large cap, and we do invest in larger companies. But not many large companies are growing at double digit rates. Um, so th there have been times over, over a long period of time, there have been a few occasions where we've had a lot more in large cap. But that isn't the case today. So I think small and mid cap is, has been beaten up much more than any other part of the market. It's very, very cheap, that part of the market. So that's our focus today. Um, AIM is something we're interested in, uh, and we don't really make a distinction between AIM and, and, and full list. In terms of liquidity, it's the same. Quite a lot of the businesses we own on AIM are capitalized hundreds of millions, if not, even, if not billions. So they're, some, they're not tiny companies. Um, I think it's right that AIM comes with a health warning, because I think 80% of AIM is, un is uninvestable. But the 20% that's good is often very good. And in that 20%, could you give us some examples of companies that you, that you own there? Well, Franchise Brands is one. Um, I think Lounges is also one aim. But we, we don't sort of make a distinction. So I, I, I almost have to, I have to think about it quite hard to know where they are. Um, but you know, the, we have plenty of companies on aim. You know, CVS Group, the um, veterinary surgery business, it's, it's a decent sized business, that's on aim. Um, you know, you, you can find quite large companies there. Um, so we have no prejudice against AIM at all. The only risk with AIM is if some of the tax advantages were removed. But right now, there is no premium for that at all. You said before that smaller companies are very cheap at the moment. So what is the discount to large companies if there is one? And why is there a discount there at the moment? Um, I think it's a lot of it's fashion. You know, I think we're in a phase now where the UK is deeply out of fashion. That's been the case for a little while, but it's become very extreme in the last year or two. Um, and that's, you can see it in the press, you know, it's fashionable for people to think the UK is a disastrous economy. The facts don't support that, but uh, it's, become, that's, it's fashionable to beat up on everything that's to do with the UK. Um, and I think mid and small cap are more vulnerable, mainly for liquidity reasons. You know, if, if people are selling, and in bear markets people sell, you know, there's a lot of selling, they're more vulnerable to, to, to selling pressure. There's a bigger reaction to it. And then that becomes self-fulfilling. So you have, um, if a fund has redemptions, they then have to sell some stocks. That drives shares down. That means performance is worse. They have to have more redemptions. So you, you, there's a bit of that going on, which is more, more impactful in the mid and small cap space than it would be in the larger company space. I don't, I don't have a number of my, off the top of my head what the exact discount is, but it, it's, it's, it's wider than normal, much wider than normal. Tesco and Prudential are large companies that don't scream growth to me, but they make it into the top 10 of your portfolio. Why do they make the grade? Well, they're, we're happy with double digit growth. So they're not super dynamic, but they're growing in our view at around 10%. I mean, Prudential had numbers today where they were producing much higher numbers than that. But there's an element of recovery there because of the you know, Chinese business being shut down during COVID. Um, but um, we, we would expect 10% per annum plus from Prudential. They're aiming for much bigger numbers than that on the, on the five-year plan. They're aiming for 15, 20%. Um, similarly, Tesco's very cheaply rated, um, chucking out lots of cash. It's, its competitive position is probably the best it's been in years. You know, two of their major competitors are hobbled, hobbled with a lot of debt. Um, the discounters are becoming big, <laughs> and so that's going to have some effects on them too. Um, and they're also, in our view, going to deliver around 
Um, I mean, the first half of the current year, the retail business in the UK delivered 14% um, profit growth. Um, so th they're not they're not in the category of, for instance, a franchise brand. That's going a lot quicker, but um, th but they're very attractive. And are there any sectors that you avoid because of the, la the lack of growth there? We, we look at everything. Um, at the wide end of the funnel, we look at everything. There are certain types of operation we're less likely to be keen on. Businesses that guzzle capital, we're less likely to be keen because we're focused on cash flow. Um, because we want to get some reassurance that growth will continue on a multi-year basis, we're trying to avoid more cyclical businesses. Um, but we cast the net wide initially. Mark, thanks for coming in. Thank you. And that's all we've got time for. You can check out more insider interviews on our YouTube channel where you can like, comment and subscribe. See you next time.